So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Kaspar Korjus. My name is Kasper, uh, extremely honored to be here. Um, I've been involved with e-residency for exactly one year by now, and I'm happy to share some experiences, uh, lessons learned and journey so far. Uh, before, I would really like to know something more about you, so please cooperate a bit. So I would know like how deep to go in some other field. So please raise your hand if you're Estonian. Okay, thank you. Uh, please raise your hand if you have heard anything about the residency, the basics. Okay, I'll have this. Uh, please raise your hand if you are rather deeply interested in like startups and entrepreneurship and want to build perhaps something yourself. Cool. Thanks. Um, so. I need to cover the, some basics very shortly, but uh, we'll go through the process and the benefits and the users. And please do raise your hand if you have questions coming straight on, right? So, this is the card, the magic card, which uh, the world has spoken <laughs> for the last one year. The card itself is nothing new. Estonians, we have been using, like we know, these cards for over 15 years. I've, I've never physically voted on like voting machine, I've always used that card. I, I don't know how to like do this signature. <laughs> I do that using this card. I get the prescriptions here, I declare my votes using this card. So basically this is how like everyday gadget that we do. Uh, the difference is that now we allowed and open these gates for foreigners. So everybody who desires can become an EU resident of Estonia and get access to digital world that Estonia has to offer. Nothing more, you can't travel with this card, you can't vote, you can just use digital services to authenticate and to digitally sign anything. So as the idea itself is, was quite boring for like over 10 years ago already, it didn't like really launch. If you want to become e-resident, uh, today it's very easy to do. You go to our website, you fill in all the application form, you pay 50 euros per credit card, and uh, Estonia will then do through a background check of you. And once you don't have any criminal records or uh, narcotics or whatever things uh, what can be bad, then you are, receive an email that well done, come and pick up your car. And you can pick up your card on those different locations around the world, from Tokyo to New York. If you're going to the embassy, you show, you identify yourself with passport, you give fingerprints and you receive the card, which kind of already works. So it takes approximately now two to three months. Um, so the journey of viewers has really began uh, 1st of September, so it's, we can say it's even less than one year old project. And our CIO, Davi Kotka, together with Siv Zikut and Rutan, who's uh, proposed an idea that let's have 10 million e Estonians. So the idea itself was there for a long time, but they kind of framed it as a business, as a governmental business. Let's have 10 million e Estonians. When I approached Tavo one year ago and asked why 10 million, like what it means, he answered that he doesn't know either. Like, let's think big. Like, why should we just open this case? Let's, let's start doing business as a government. So and this idea was interesting enough for me, and uh, and then he offered uh, this scholarship, which they won, and for 12 months, and I quit my job and I started running this project. But first of all, it kind of was like any other project in Carmen, you know, there are like thousands of them. 
But the difference was that uh, we didn't have any idea why we are doing it and to whom we are doing it. So and if you're doing a startup and you don't know anything about the project, what do you do? You build some kind of launch page, some kind of site where is some information what you do know. And uh, we also built the subscription kind of list where you can put your name and email address to subscribe if you want to become an e-resident, just to see if there is anyone out there who wants to become e-resident. Within the first 20 hours, we received over 4,000 applications from 150 different countries. So it, within the first day, the word of mouth spread everywhere internationally. And <laughs> that was like first shock to us that there might be something bigger behind this idea. But uh, we, we were really shocked on that day, I remember. Uh, I asked those guys, once if there were like 9,000 of them, I asked, why did you apply or why do you want to apply? And 60% of them told me that uh, they want to run business through Estonia. So this was like, First, this stronger evidence that there is some real business uh, behind it. It was, and 40% of them were just for fun and it's cool and that kind of uh, early adapters. So we went on. Because of this positive uh, feedback, the Parliament accepted by 1st of November all the legislation. No one voted against this. This was like very exception in Estonia. Usually, all opposition is against for everything. <coughs> here no one was against this. So. And by 1st of December, at the East Estonia showroom, we had our first e-residency card issued. And uh, Edward Lucas then, uh, uh, from Great Britain, uh, made his first digital signature, which actually worked. The card was printed out just like one and a half hours before that, and there were some mistakes and names and stuff, but the card itself worked and uh, it got huge public attention. And we went to the US um, trip with our Prime Minister and, and uh, that was a huge success there. Basically wherever I told her that I was from Estonia, whether I was in Uber, taxi, restaurant, then people had their own stories. I oh, always Estonia is some kind of new country or, or new East Asia which doesn't have a land or whether it's some kind of way how I can travel to the EU now and more laundry money easier way. Or, Everybody had their fun theories, and none of them were kind of true. But somehow this e residency concept kind of spread everywhere. So then we kind of literally scratch our heads, like, what's going on? <laughs> and, uh, and we came back from the Silicon Valley, and uh, we put together a documentation for our cabinet. Uh, to take this program more seriously, to invest in this, to formulate the team, to have some mandate to actually run and uh, make some changes in government. And we got this. By mid February, I was elected as team lead there at Enterprise Estonia. And uh, by 1st of April, then uh, I have a team of seven members. They are uh, business development, risk analysts. Lawyer, quality of assurance, marketing communications, UX guy, and uh, our first goal was then to make this a beta launch. So we take this program uh, like a government startup, uh, like you see so far. Basically, usually it someone accepts in government, then people start to market or promote it. We had it before. If someone uses <laughs> one program as a team and mandate to do anything before issuing e and start. So all this is like other way around. And uh, from 13th of May, we had great uh, two uh, events to celebrate. First of all, we opened online application form. You, you can now manage to apply online and become e uh, And uh, the open third day for them is like I showed before. And this then was another way for e residents to become e residents. Next step with our team was uh, to actually understand what e residents want and to make those changes happen. 
So by the 17th of July, we put together a package of legislative changes, process changes, and service changes, what Estonia needs to take in order to become rich. Uh, on 17th July, the cabinet accepted everything. <coughs> All the package. That package includes, for example, allowing e-residents to open bank accounts online, to run companies without being in Estonia ever, to make actually the software more user-friendly, not like today, which is like 20 years old. So this was another great day for us. Um, but without further ado, let's see if we don't have any questions about the journey, let's see why and to whom we are doing it. We have some understanding already why people want to become here. Do you have any questions before that? So we can divide the residency user groups or use cases into four categories, just to make it a bit easier to understand. First group, people who physically visit Estonia or some physical connections to Estonia. For example, Claire here is academic from Australia. Before Claire arrived to Estonia, she had uh, actually signed contract with the plant to stay here for three weeks. She had signed a uh, contract with the university, so all the paperwork were already done before she arrived there. And while Claire is in Estonia, she can go to Prisma food store, get discounts, she can enter to libraries using this card, she can top up some money on public transport. So, like all Estonians are using this card every day life, basically, this helps also foreigners while they are short term time in Estonia to make the life a bit more convenient. And that's it, right? There's lots of ways how Estonia could think, what to take it further, how to build, uh, I don't know, a tourist car to get promotions to get priority seating in airport or many ways to think here. This is not my team priority at the moment. This is why we are building e-residency today. We are building a virtual business environment. These people here are mainly from, if I can say like, developing world. Malaysia, India, Indonesia, that part mostly. Uh, and why? There are three main reasons why. First of all, uh, sometimes those people, uh, they are very difficult to actually have a company because Western world don't trust these companies and don't trust them, <coughs> people don't want to cooperate with them. So the level of trust for those companies are sometimes so low that they have difficult to manage. Second issue, and which is perhaps the biggest issue, is that those guys usually don't have access to services. If you want to build a website or something, you need a payment provider, for example, PayPal, Stripe, Braintree, whatever. And those service providers are not offering services on those countries, so it means that case here of Stanislav, Stanislav is a painter, really paints, you know, in Ukraine. And because of the Ukraine situation at the moment, he really needs needed to like stop this work and kind of do some other stuff because the salary there wasn't enough because the only people who managed to pay for his paintings were in Ukraine. Now he became e-resident, he opened up a company that got payment provider service and now manages to sell all the paintings internationally. So this is the second, access to services. And third, the hassle-free environment that Estonia offers. Sometimes it takes months some guy told me it took 10 months to establish a company. 10 months. Just to know whether the company name is available and register to all the paperwork. And if those guys like discover that somehow in Estonia it's possible to do within 20 minutes, then it's like shocking for them. So the use case here is that entrepreneurs, freelancers internationally want to become e residents to establish a company in Estonia establish bank accounts, get access to payment providers and have digital signature which enables them to do location independent business <coughs> fully on cloud. So basically, they can get the EU body, EU level of trust, EU banks, services without ever need to travel to Estonia or to EU. 
and that's huge. That's like literally tens of millions of people who desire it. And, uh, and like I told, Estonia is not there yet. We just kind of understood to who we need to do it, and, and now we understood what we need to change. In this case, we need to make all the services more user-friendly. No one understands about digital signature at the moment. <laughs> no, even downloading software is still sometimes in Estonia. Uh, second, uh, we need to change the legislation that you legally would be able to run a company abroad that day you are not. Second, bank account. Today you need to come physically to Estonia to open a bank account. That will change. You can do it in 10 months' time through internet. Others. There are like 20, 30 different legislation changes, more, but those are the biggest ones. So I can say that after like 10, year, 10 months time or something, we should be confident enough and not embarrassed too much to start like actually selling it. Selling e-residency to some markets. And that would be fun as a government to sell something because it's fairly easier as a startup. I go further, we can come back to this later, why we are doing it in the first place. Every third year resident today is in this group, the third group. These are people, here we have an example of Carlos from Argentina, who really don't want to use any services per se. They just want this sense of belongingness to something greater than just one nation state those borders, those restrictions, those hassle, everything. This is like e-residency seen by them as something new, e-governance, e-concept, something, some, some greater thing to belong to, some new identity. And those soft values drive those people. And why they are like necessary for us, because they are like, they pay 50 euros to Estonia to do free marketing internationally. They're like speaking about the Estonia, the governments, like everywhere, and uh, they're like great ambassadors for Estonia. It's up to Estonia then how we can realize to them, how we can build this community, and how we can like put them to really do some sophisticated work for us. We don't know exactly that how we do it, but uh, but let's see. This is not today's our project also. And why I asked before if you are interested in entrepreneurship or uh, business in general, then this is your group, why you should be. Do you understand that this is e-residence is actually a platform, platform for every business to actually integrate and start selling services. And I, I'll go a bit further and deeper what I mean here. I divide here also the platform cases from four, so please try again to pay attention um, and see if you come up with some ideas. If you come up with ideas how you can utilize <coughs> this uh, government startup to build your own stuff. First group of people are like, uh, I screenshot to the Facebook, login with Facebook and put their links, then login with e residency. And uh, to understand that you can put that icon on your website and uh, allow e residents to log into your services. And the question is why you should do it. Because e residents is like first really transnational digital identity scheme, which means that it's like the highest level of identity, which follows all the KYC know your customer requirements, and which kind of allows in, in, inside EU to do all the digital signing and to access all the services through this. So this login is the same as physical meeting in the EU. And this signature is the same as physical, uh, uh, as the physical signature. And to give some examples who <coughs> are today using this method. Uh, our companies, especially in FinTech area, example of Stripe and uh, PayPal and those guys, who we are working together uh, is that, for example, if Stripe kind of company 
wants to offer services to Malaysian and Indonesian people, then they actually need to go to Malaysia, meet you, do face-to-face -face meetings, uh, all the other bank requirements, uh, a huge amount of work. Now, they will just integrate e-residency and they will tell to their 10 million subscriptionless people internationally that if you want to start using our service, become a Estonian e-resident and we trust you. And they can scale through e-residency internationally. If you understand this right, because e-residency, Estonia is doing face-to-face -face meetings for them, background check for them, giving access card for them, which is legit, so they can go everywhere and offer their services. And this is huge. Coinbase, uh, blockchain and those examples where you need to be sure that the other person is the one who she or he claims to be. Then there are loads of use cases because I personally <coughs> haven't seen any services built on, on top of blockchain or, or virtual currencies in general, but, uh, but definitely there should be cases where you need to be sure that the other person is the one who he claims to be. You know? It's up to us how we build the services. You know? it's, all the market is kind of free. <laughs> I'll go further. You can build new services because there are like 25 different functions which this card has besides digital signature and authentication. Basically, I'll just a few examples. A encrypted video call, save file storage, online profile page, so that every e-resident has a page URL which he or she can share and show that I'm a legitimate person, you, know, you can trust me on internet, you can put this URL to eBay to whatever accounts, you know. So, think about the functionalities, what it offers, and create new startups. Then, if you're a corporation, or if you're, if you need to make your internal processes in your company more efficient, then this is one way how some logistics construction companies have seen it. Every person can be tracked, traced, whether what he enters, where he enters, when one package goes to the other position, etc. So this can be all logged, traced, digital sign, and it would make this internal process more efficient. I have never seen so far a company who has actually implemented that, but like three or four big corporations are still speaking about it, it's including one uh, EU uh, EU body uh, which uh, deals with cybersecurity. And the last, which is perhaps a bit more boring but very necessary, e-residents need huge amount of support legal business accounting and all the other services build up these communities for them to actually manage this type. So you can think of services in this field. So, all in all, just in very easy way, we can clarify EU residency into four groups. Number two is where, as a government, we are making efforts to serve and to become the one and best virtual business environment internationally for every citizen, wherever you're from, you can start, run and manage your company online. But my personally, if I have like done this thing here so that it actually would work, I'm also looking at the fourth group and looking for ideas what I can take myself further after this program. <coughs> And the question of why, perhaps, why Estonia is doing it and why I believe it will succeed. Uh, well, now I guess it's quite obvious why Estonia is doing it already. Like half an year ago, it was quite debatable. Estonia is doing it, I'm not, we are not like officially saying that in like journals or anything, but to get rich, we want to be rich, richer at least. And this, as we see, there's one possibility how to do it. Basically what Estonia does, it uh, makes its market size bigger than just people, citizens and residents in Estonia. Estonian companies can start serving customers internationally. And this is how Estonia receives money. The Stanislav case, who is a painter, Estonia is not taking these taxes. Because the business activity is taking place in Ukraine, and Estonia cannot take those taxes. 
which means that actually Ukraine means you can start businesses uh, and these people can start businesses and bring new money to their countries without any investment. Just through EU residency, people can raise new money to their country and they are paying taxes to Ukraine. So Stanislav means, Ukraine means, and how Estonia means is that the Estonian companies can offer services for them. e residents need bank account, physical address, legal advice, tax advice, and all those Estonian companies offer services and Estonia receives new money to the country and eventually those private sector pays taxes to the government. Then this is the business model for Estonia. To enable the private sector to build services and offer them to EU residents. And in this scheme, we kind of see that other nation states should start supporting this platform, enable their, like promote. Anyone here from India? Malaysia? Indonesia? They're so close by. Uh, to actually go to the government and say that, hey, without any investment, let's all Malaysians become Estonian EU residents, get access to the new services and bring international money in. I can't see why it should happen. And in that sense, if the goal of 10 million EU residents is like too optimistic, then like, hell no. <laughs> We have like service providers who have 10 million people in the subscription list who want to become viewers, who want to send this out. So, why Estonia is doing it? First drive is business. Government as a business, as a service provider, going to the same field as private sector. So imagine a private sector company, like doing a video call, becoming the best of it, becoming a Skype. Doing the social media, becoming the best of it, becoming Facebook. Like you get one billion users, right? If government starts to become a service provider, why shouldn't government get one billion users? If you're the best one who offers, like for example, virtual business environment, why should you stop in ten thousand? You know, because if you're the best, and people choose the best, and you get one billion, and that's then crazy, you know. <laughs> If government can be like million times richer per capita, <laughs> and and it, it, I see it's so possible in next ten years time. Different governments start like better competing or cooperating in this field to offer offer their services to international customers, not only to locals. Because why government is so different than a startup? Imagine being a startup. Estonian or Finn or whatever, and only serving Estonians or Finns. You know. The taxi fine in Estonia would only be in Estonia, and eventually Uber would take it. You know. The same way with government. If government only starts and last serving only its citizens and residents, it just cannot be competitive enough in the international market. It starts, it needs to go to international markets. And the Eurozone is kind of first. Not really first, but one really first bigger example how this can be done, and I'm very excited about that. Um, how many minutes do I still have? Fifteen. Um, the other aspect, last aspect, and I would like perhaps to get some Q and A also, is uh, now as a team, it's kind of. The why is also like a kind of moral, it feels like moral obligation for Estonia to do it because there is kind of no too many extra costs to open these services to foreigners. Because the infrastructure is there, the services are there, user pays for 50 euros to get the access. And if the platform is working and functioning well, why should Estonia stop allowing others also in? So it now feels like the way how Estonia can actually lead this e-commerce world and show, show the way. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, our final goal is to unlock the entrepreneurial potential of every world citizen. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Please.
Вот это часть этих. Um, I see that you, what you sell basically is trust, right? Uh, you say we check those people, you can trust them. But what happens when the first uh, scams happen and people in Malaysia doing business uh, disappear? Who, who is going to be responsible? Yes, good question. What happens if someone fucks it up? We are sure that they will fuck it up. And there will be scams. And many. What we are also sure that the positive effects are much bigger than the scams. And there are much more good people in this world than bad people. Uh, who is responsible is the private sector. Me as a bank, I as a bank am responsible for my customers and what they do. And banks have, in Estonia at least, very, very strong technical and those levels how to deal with them, considering IPs and all the other automatic ways how they deal with those fraud cases. And, uh, and uh, why I have spoken to criminals, also one use case was also criminal here, so I researched all the criminals. And I asked them, uh, why shouldn't you use this platform to do something bad? And those guys answered me, I don't know if they lied or not, but at least they answered me that uh, Kasper, if I, if I really want to launder money or do something, I really wouldn't go and give my fingerprints. I really wouldn't go a country where everything is digitalized, everything I do leaves a footprint. I would prefer a country where I can pay by cash or give someone else to pay by cash. So those are some reasons why they see that this is not the best place in the world to launder money. But yeah, uh, my answer would still be that there will be. And it, it's, it is up to the government to be then strong enough to have polls and say that yes, those things happen. But we make the life in the world better. And we take the responsibility. More questions? Yeah, please. My question is more like from a UX standpoint. Oh, it's too hard for this. Well, so give, give it a moment. Uh, now. Yeah. Uh, my question is more from a UX standpoint uh, because what really solved the whole e-government thing for me was mobile ID. You don't have to carry the card or the reader or anything. Um, is there any plans to allow mobile ID for EU residents? Are you realize it's probably not like priority because the uh, international entrepreneurs and stuff couldn't use that because you need uh, support from the carrier provider. Well, for example, international students or people who stay in Estonia for longer, I can really see a use case for them. Thank you. Uh, very good question. Uh, especially when we are, <laughs> we are, I'm stating that the market is in Asia and there are, there are like sometimes no smart uh, like ways how you can attach ID card reader that you have only mobile devices and smart. So, uh, the answer is that, yes, this is a bit challenging. On one way, uh, we are now working together with telecoms to allow mobile ID, but the challenge is that uh, you still need to then become a Estonian telecom partner. And that they will do, and it, it's their business model how they can scale internationally also. Uh, but if you don't have like dual SIMs, then you should have like two phones or something to do this, <coughs> just designing and that's like silly, you know. So, this is one way what we do, and then your use cases will be solved. People who are in Estonia, it might be easier. But the other thing is the NFC solution, which actually we have all already tested and it works. So basically how it works is that uh, uh, you put your NFC card, basically exactly the same card, the next cars already have NFC uh, inside this. Put next to your phone, and then you enter PIN code and uh, it kind of works and the uh, communication is safe and true there also. What is their challenge is that uh, iOS doesn't support it. Yet. Yet. Well, we don't know if ever. You know, and as government to offer service and, and I confirm that we can still offer if only uh, Windows and, uh, and uh, Android will be supported. But most of our early adopters <laughs> have still iPhones and they couldn't use it. So this is one challenge. And if 
Apple will change that, then it's great. If not, then still we need to find some alternative way. Well, there is uh, some NFC functionality like deep in the system in the latest iPhones, I believe. It's just not open to the developers. It's not open. Right. It's but also, if you say that your uh, a big focus is developing countries, then you're probably fine with doing for Android, I think. That can be valid. Yeah. change the international laws and regulations. What they are to before e-residency, it is after. E-residency just makes it easier to do international business. So to answer your question, if your business activity is not in Estonia, then Estonia double tax. Don't double tax. If you have, then it taxes you. And if your country wants to double tax, even the so, then it's your problem. <laughs> Um, I can ask Janne uh, from, oh, from Helsinki, just related to the previous question. Um, if I establish a company uh, in Estonia with any residency uh, and I run activities through that one and then I want to transfer money from the Estonian bank account to a British bank account, very practical question, what do I do? What should, what, yeah, what was the question, what I do? Yeah, like, is it just like a matter of international money? Yeah, all the EU banks have the same and it okay. lasts so, the order. So basically, this the banking is one of the core reasons why uh, EU residents want to become EU residents because sometimes they just need an EU bank account for other EU member states to transfer money to. Because you don't want to deal, if you have two customers, one has a Malaysian bank and one has an EU bank, and you're an EU member, then you, you choose the EU uh, partner itself. So that just makes the transfer easier. Okay. And so the taxing was if the business is actually providing service in Estonia to Estonian customers, then you pay tax in Estonia. But if providing service in Finland, then not paying tax. Quick answer is yes, but the real answer is really depends on the company. Okay. If I ask that question from my tax. Uh, Asians and those guys, then uh, basically they asked me 25 extra questions okay. to understand what's the real case. Yes. Okay. Uh, but the big rule, rule of thumb is that you pay taxes where the business activity is held. And the Estonia and Finland has very tight and good cooperation at that level that they don't double tax. Yeah, for sure. Besides tax questions? Yes. Thank you. I like uh, this e residence. I want to try it, but I really wonder about one thing. So, uh, Estonia will have all my personal data, and if uh, the global situation is changed, is it possible for Estonian government to make harm for me or my business? Because uh, this e residence, uh, it can be confirmed with uh, everything that was done, was done by me, even if something was, wasn't. So if Estonia can do something, then yes, if the e residence card is not the right for person to have, it's like an Estonian kind of, you can't say gift, but Estonian kind of, I don't know the English word. It's up to Estonia government to block it or to enable it. And if Estonia wants to block it, you can just do it without need to give you any reasons. So in that sense, if you have business which have some like weird things, and the Stoner blocks your ID card, you need to travel to Stoner to meet the officials to unblock it again. 
no, my answer is not about blocking or blocking card. I'm talking about that if I made international business yeah. and yeah. Estonian is some like uh, insurance for my clients. So <laughs> if uh, Estonian government want to do something bad for me because I'm the citizen of the of country that Estonian has a not very close relations. Is it possible uh, for this to make it happen? To get access to your data? Uh, not access, but uh, uh, do do things. Uh, okay. for, so to, to play as they are like you? Yes. yes no, yes. that's the reason. The basics of this EU residency card just. Just to make you understand is that uh, if you're going to bank website, you see HTTPS, like secure website. It has a certificate every time you go there, it's certified that this bank is the one bank who the bank claims to be. This chip has the same method. It has private and public key, it has certificates. Every time you log in, you are certified whether you are the you and you have the right to be there. So if you own this card, then no one else can use uh, uh, any applications, uh, how to enter or how to do digital signature. But the Estonian government does have the private key as well. Or no? No. So nobody it's, it's can uh, make the same, even if the government. No. So only one card, one person, no copies. Okay, thank you. Yes. Last question. Sorry, last question. We are running out of time. Um, okay, I have a question. Um, you mentioned many reasons why people from developing countries would actually apply for the EU residency. And I was wondering whether this EU residency is also appealing to people who are residents in other EU countries who want to, for example, start a company. One reason I can think of why I, as a resident of another EU state, would start a company in Estonia is your unique tax system when you basically do not uh, charge any corporation tax on profits that are not uh, distributed to the company. Are there any other reasons why I would prefer to start a company in Estonia rather than in the UK for example or Ireland? Yeah. So, for EU members what are the reasons other uh, to establish company besides taxes, uh, which is a zero percent income tax if you reinvest it. So look it up. But I don't want to mention tax because the tax issue is complicated and it can confuse. If you see that you need to pay tax in Estonia, then it's great place. Besides taxes, uh, the main thing is freedom. Freedom to be digital nomad, to travel everywhere, to be where you want to be, to put everything location in independently and as the freeway through digital channels with Estonian government and private sector. So this freedom to actually be an entrepreneur is one of the main reasons why other EU member state EU residents are also there. One extra note to give you is that after two years EIDAS directive from EU being really enforced. What means EIDAS? means that every EU member state who acts uh, who accepts themselves some digital authentication or signature needs to start accepting e residents also. So basically, after two years' time, Estonian e resident is Finn e resident. Estonian e resident is a Portugal e resident because Estonian e resident can do the same things as in other countries. That's a very difficult thing to comprehend, but uh, the digital single market is very close. And then we all have EU residents. And think of the services what EU residents want in your countries. And come to me and let's build it. Thank you.